So, Father, we agree with your precious word today that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Whatever is going on, Father God, in our lives, I thank you, Father God, that you're the great corrector, you're the great stabilizer, and that you're the great God who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that we could ever ask or think according to the power I will say that it is so important in this time that as we've learned to live with other things, inadequacies, inferiorities, physical incapacities, medical situations, many have learned to live with those. But we must learn to live with the anointing. And believe that just like the woman with the issue of blood who touched the wings of the prayer cloth, the tallit, we must never forget that there is healing in his wings. The edges of the tallit. If you can learn to live with lack, you can learn to live with plenty. If you can learn to live with the sickness and medicate every day, well, then you can learn to live with the anointing and receive deliverance for every day. I believe. Today, we choose life, blessing, and refuse the curse. We receive wisdom from on high on how to live this life and to see the works of the enemy completely destroyed of our lives. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Let's give him thanks. I worship you. Come on, just give him just a few more moments of thanks. Could we all just stand just one more minute and worship, and worship you. Isn't it so wonderful to be in his presence today? It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Father, you see every life. You're there every minute of every day. you see what others don't, Father. You see the deepest thoughts. You see every motive. And you see even within ourselves, Father. But yet, 
You said we were fearfully and wonderfully made. (laughs) So I choose to lean into that. And I probably could write a book on the things I did wrong, Father. But why would I do that? But when Colossian tells me that I can come to a just God who cleanses me in the blood of the Lamb and erases all handwriting against me, who casts all that is wrong into the sea of forgetfulness and has no record of wrong. But yet, Father, I meet you with my life and I choose to consecrate. For you prepare me to be that sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true.
Say, I believe. This year makes a difference in my life. I bring myself afresh to the Lord Jesus Christ. Savior, Master, Lord, Redeemer, King of my life. I surrender and submit my life and yield it one more time to serve you with all my heart, all my mind, with all my being. In Jesus' precious name. Come on, if you believe that, give the Lord thanks today. Come on, thank Him with all of your heart. Thank Him with all of your heart. Thank Him with all of your heart. Well, you may take your seats this morning. Praise the Lord. Such a beautiful presence of the Lord. And we could just keep singing this morning. But God has got so many things that he wants to do and so many wonderful things he wants to say within the next few minutes. And we're going to let him do that. Praise God. And everybody said a big amen. What well, are you glad you came to church? Isn't the Lord good? Hallelujah. You know, I'm amazed. I'm in awe about the goodness of God. Is Linda Ponomarenko in the room this morning? She's not here. I wanted her to testify. She came forward for prayer last weekend about something that came up in x-rays and things like that and, or wherever. And uh, she went to the doctor this week and there's nothing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Come on, you can do better than that. I mean, Oh, I'm going to ask you to praise the Lord one more time this morning. Amen. We... God, praise the Lord. It's so wonderful. And I don't know if you drove in by the way of Skelly Drive this morning, but you would have seen our beautiful fence outside the building this morning. Amen. And some of you are like, whoa, wow, what's the big news about a fence? Everything. Because you did that. God did that through you. God did that through each and every one of us. Amen. The blessing that is upon your life, what you do, how you do it, and how your heart is to serve the Lord by serving this house, not only physically, but financially. It's the most amazing thing. You know, we brought it to you last week, of course. We've been pouring money outside and doing different things, different projects around, you know. I don't know if you know on the top level, we're already, you know, building out, you know, an office for Pastor Karn and myself. Everybody say amen to that. But also the elevator on the top floor, you know, is going to be working very soon over this next couple of weeks. Say a big amen to that. And there's just so much stuff that is going on around here. Praise the Lord. You know, but one of the things that was so, so in our hearts was to see at least make a move towards, you know, just having, you know, a physical you know, place where, where our kids can lose a little energy. How many people know that helps our children's ministers? How many people know that helps you as a parent, praise the Lord? Amen. If you can get your children back tired after a Sunday morning, that's a blessing. Hallelujah. I mean, yes. it means you can get a doze this afternoon. Amen. So our, our whole, but it's evolved and evolved. And, you know, instead of just having a playground out there, now we have, you know, a play park. Amen. And we're going from, you know, just having a place of climbing frames and, you know, all of those different things, bouncy things and climbing things and climbing spheres and all of those different things to now having another area, you know, of course, adding in basketball, all of those different things and seats so that we can actually utilize and enjoy that area. It's amazing. But, you know, to do that, you know, it wouldn't matter where you are today, I believe in protection. I just believe the days that we're living in, it wouldn't matter where we were. You know, even I was down at the minister's conference at EMIC and right out in the middle of nowhere, you know, KCM and EMIC have a beautiful fence all around the property. And I thought, you know, if they can have a fence around the property out here, we can have a fence at 41st and Sheridan oh, as well. And if their fence can be beautiful way out here where nobody can see it, ours can be beautiful. Yes. Where everybody can see it. And you say, well, I get excited over a fence. Well... I believe everything as we do it can be done to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. 
So you'll see out there, praise the Lord, the money came in to do that fence. I want you to put your hands together. Come on, you can do better than that. I had someone contact me last Sunday afternoon and said, Pastor, whatever didn't come in for the fence, I'd like to make that up. And they brought the check on, on, on Monday to finish that. Isn't that the most amazing thing? Amen. So from one Sunday to the next Sunday, we have a fence up. Praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, we're believing to do things around here as quick as that. Hallelujah. Just like that. That means each of us are going to prosper. I'm going to try that one more time. Each of us is going to prosper. Prosper exponentially so that God can get to you what it is you need to receive so that you can do diligence and bring it to the house of the Lord. Now, I want to say this to you. In Psalm 115, it tells us that you're not a steward, you're an owner. For it says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, right? But he gave it to us. He didn't get, make you steward over it. He made you owner. See, sometimes there's a teaching that comes through that when the Lord gives you something like this, you know, jacket I'm wearing, oh, the Lord just made me steward over this. No, I own this jacket. So sometimes you have, when we have a mindset that we're just stewards and not owners, it's weaker. Because when you own something, things change. If I'm just looking after something for someone else, it's not as strong. Not everyone is as diligent to look after someone else's. Okay. Don't take this off my message. I'm just trying to help you. So when we have a mentality like comes through the body of Christ, well, I'm just a steward of whatever God has given me. That can be a little weak. For instance, typically statistics will tell you rent houses. You know, if you own a stack of houses and you have people renting them, not every renter is going to look after your house like they would look after it if they owned it. Right? For instance, we own this building. So I'm telling everybody, I don't want to have to do this again for a very long time. So let's do it the best we can do it and the way we want it done and not have a make-do mentality. Because when you put the stuff in, it has to be what you want and not make do. Well, you know, I'd love to put it in, but we can't do that. Hold on until you can do it or build your faith until what you want can actually materialize. So when you have a steward mentality, it can sometimes just let you off the hook a little bit with this earth that's been given to us. <laughs> so if you're renting, I hope and pray that you're looking after that house, touching up that house. Well, it's not my house. I don't have to do it. But the law of integrity is at work. And the scripture plays there is that if you are faithful over that which is another man's, then God will make you ruler. Oh, it's quiet in here. I didn't come to church this morning to hear this. Yes, you did. Because every single one of us is desiring to prosper. How many people desire to prosper in this room? How many people believe you are prospering in this room? How many people believe this is your year of prosperity? Come on, guys. Increases, promotions, jobs. <laughs> Amen. So when you just have a steward mentality... It's not as strong. But when you own it, like my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The silver is his, the gold is his, but yet in Scripture he tells us, I give it to you. Right? 
Now, you know that a lot of people here in Oklahoma, they own a lot of land. So imagine, you know, me walking onto their land and just saying, you know what, praise the Lord, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And <laughs> well, the thing is, is that in Oklahoma, you're going to find out from the farmer very quickly with the gun looking at you that you don't own that land. Exactly. How many people is blessed to live in Oklahoma? I mean, I'm telling you, Florida is not messing around. Amen. They're telling you, you come on our property, we believe in our amendment rights. Yeah. You come on my property, you burgle my home, you could feel my gun. Yeah. And Florida is really pushing the narrative. Yeah. Yeah. A burglar should not be in your house. Yeah. You say, well, I don't think this should be preached in church. Well, where should we preach it? Well, I think you should turn the other cheek with someone rampaging and stealing you blind. Oh, it's the burglar. Well, we'll go for a coffee until he's finished. But that's what some of us do with the devil. Amen. That's right. That's right. And the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy John 10. 10. But what about the life that has been given to us? We were given this to look after. I'm just not stewarding my body. It's the only one I've got. I own it. Look at your neighbor and say, you own it. You own what you are. Went quiet. I heard you honking your horn when everybody said we're prosperous. Prosperous! But when I brought it back down to you are what you are, yeah. everybody's like, I bind that devil in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Lord, give the pastor something good to say. <laughs> An owner's mentality is very strong. And it's a mentality that we need to receive more in our lives than just steward. We have become owners of this property. The name on this deed, the name on whatever, 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 into the hands of Living Rivers Millennial Church. That changes things. I declare over you that as you go through this year, the law of acquisition is going to rise and multiply in your lives. Come on, let's agree for this right now. There is none that has given up land or house, Mark chapter 10, that won't receive now in this time, plural, multiple. It started off by saying, be fruitful, multiply. And he hasn't changed his thought. The sons and daughters of God were supposed to rule and reign as kings in this life. And we were never supposed to be anything other than the head. We were never supposed to be anything other than owners. I declare over this year, debts are about to be paid. Come on, somebody, take it. Well, I don't even have a house. This is for you. And if you do have a house, this is for you. And if you've given up anything in your life, God is no man's debtor. He says, I am giving it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. So you can look back over the last 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and look what you have actually not had taken from you, but willingly gave up. You might have owned and now you're renting. Get ready, you're about to buy. No, I'm going to come down up there. Praise the Lord. Get ready. Because it's time. It's time spiritually. 
It's time emotionally. Amen. It's time physically. It's time relationally. And it's time financially. Well, God's going to have to work a miracle. That is who he is. God does miracles. Under the wilderness, God still covered them with clouds. I wish the clock would stop. Like Joshua and the moon hang over Ajalon. He gave them heat. I want to speak this over you. It is your right to have heat. As a child of God, every single one of us should have enough to at least heat our homes. You should not be afraid of sitting there wondering how you're going to pay your utility bills. I declare in the name of Jesus that this year, I know some of you are like, I don't know about that. I can pay my bills. There are people that can't pay their bills. And they're believing every single week for their bills to be paid. I declare it over you that you're coming into a season that you're not going to have to think about your bills. He gave them a pillar of fire by night. True or false? He gave them what? Clouds by day. He shielded them. He led them. He kept them. I'm moving into my message. He kept them from all the stuff that was out there. These are my people, and even in the wilderness. Look at three people and say, you're going to make it. There are people with a lot of stuff, ladies and gentlemen, that have to work hard every week just to make it. Because of the lifestyle they have acquired. Doesn't matter what type Doesn't matter what part, doesn't matter what moment you are in life, every one of us is going to have to work the moment. Because whether we're working it to get at least something or working it to keep what we have and to grow more, there's not one day of our lives that we're going to be able to relax and say, I don't need faith today. (laughs) Shut it out, faith. It takes faith to do this. Not just a bunch of decisions. It takes faith every single day. Every single day of my life. Every single day. Faith. When everything shouts. Faith. Even in the wilderness. They didn't even have to get up and bake anything. That was in the wilderness. I said again. In the wilderness, they didn't even have to get up and bake anything. They went out and bread was there. Do you know, we stepped outside of our door yesterday and there was a loaf of sourdough bread on our doorstep. I said, my God, this is looking good. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hand and say, I receive. I receive. I believe we're making this too hard. With God, all things are possible. I said, with God, all things are possible. Don't settle for what you have. There's more coming. Don't settle for what's going on. There's more coming. Well, I'm just happy with what I've got. Well, then that's all you'll get. Well, I'm just happy. You know, last night I was looking at a house. And uh, I was thinking to myself, I can't believe I'm looking at this house. I've, I've not even been in this house two years. Mm-hmm. 
And the, the man part of me was like, what are you doing? And the God part of me was looking. I'm looking. God told me not to settle with that house. Yes, he did. And when he leads me by that way and I start looking, looking doesn't cost you anything. But you have to look until something speaks and calls your name. Well, I'm just happy. I couldn't be bothered. I couldn't move again. I'm, no, no, I'm now, I'll never move again. Well, there you go. Praise the Lord. Pitch your tent and cheerio. Goodbye, dream. Come on, lift your hand. Say, there's more. There's more. Come on, say it out. The Lord is my shepherd. Is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down down. in green pastures. pastures. He leads me me beside still water. Do you know when Scripture says in in the correlation between Psalm 23 and John 10, and when it starts out in John 10, it says, Verily I say unto you, do you know that over 150 times Jesus spoke like that? And when he spoke like that, it actually meant the authority of God has spoken. There are only two other times in the New Testament that it was spoken. One of the times was when Gamaliel stood up in the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 5 verse 38 and he says, guys, you better leave these men of God alone because you may find that you're coming against them or coming against God and not them. But when man spoke it, it was just suggestive. It was just, this is a pure suggestion. I wouldn't if I were you. Come on, come on, that's good. Right? But when Jesus said it, when Jesus said this, it was all authority, all power, all dominion speaking. And when he said it, he talked about, I am the shepherd. Yes, yes, yes. I will feed you. I will guide you. I will lead you. Come on, that's it. And before you ever get out of verse 1, it says, and you shall not want. Shout it out. I shall not. I shall not. not One more time. I shall not. not. How many people believe the future is better than the past? Come on. Come on, shut it out. The future is better than the past. I don't care what's going on right now. It's about to change. Hallelujah. And whether you're happy with the house you have or not, what about buying another one? And what about buying another one? And what about acquiring five, six, seven, eight, nine? What about getting yourself a portfolio of houses? Oh, I tell you, you know, praise the Lord. I, I, I don't know about all of this. Seems like a lot of work having to look after rent houses. Well, you're going to have to work anyway. It's not the truth. That's the way I treat myself every day of my life. When 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 I feel like I don't want to. I say, well, if I'm not doing this, I'm going to be doing something else. So make the most of this. Or I will have to do something else. Y'all good? Yes, yes. And man, I'm telling you, it was a beautiful first part of the service, so I don't know about this part. For the Lord is good. Yes. Oh, say it again. The Lord is good. For the Lord is good. I'm going to say it until you get it. For the Lord is good. Come on, for the Lord is good. Shut it out this year. I believe. I am an owner. Come on, 
and declare it. I believe I'm going to own a house outright. I believe I'm going to own my car outright. I believe I'm going to own whatever outright. Come on, I'm not speaking to the first five rows. Hello there at the back. This is the day that the Lord has made. Shout it out. This year, year, I I increase. increase. Say it again. This year, year, I I increase. This year, year, I I will will tithe tithe off off every every increase. increase. Every Every increase. increase. Every increase. Tithing is not seed. Went quiet again. Well, I just total it up, you know, 10%, and that's no, 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 no. (laughs) Tithing, you return into the Lord what's His. Don't touch it. Then you can start on the rest of the 90%. If all you give is 10% of everything that you get every month, you'll not increase God's way. You'll not increase God's way. If we're believing Him for the exceeding abundant, and we're expecting Him to not withhold any good thing, then we have to live in the realm of over and above. That means if we expect our Father to live in over and above, then we have to live in over and above. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time for over and above. How many people receive this today? Come on, shout it out. I believe I receive over and above. Say it again. I believe I receive over I can sense the spirit of faith in this room today. Say it again. I believe. I receive over and above. This is a good word. Hallelujah. Now go with me to Psalm 23. You can be getting your tithes and offerings ready as we preach. Hallelujah. I'm in it, so I might as well work for a minute or two. Isn't the Lord good? good. Are you still glad you came? Aren't you glad you're part of a church that is telling you this? You could be part of a church that didn't care about it. That just expected you to feed this church and we give you nothing in return. We're giving you food in return that will actually help you increase. Third John, verse 2, don't go there. Beloved, I wish above all things that thy prosper and be in health, even as... I'm going to say it again. Beloved. Keep going. That thy mast and be in, even as your... So what is your soul? Mind, will, and emotions. So this is very elementary, and we're tired of hearing this. You can't be tired of this, because when you bolt on to this, Mark chapter 4, and you hear about Psalm 23 and John 10, and you can realize that the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy, how does he do that? You get into Mark chapter 4, you start at verse 13. And you hear the sower sows the word, and then you start to see the tactics of the enemy. And what his plan is, is to render you fruitless. He does not want you to yield anything that would even remotely say to someone that you are part of the family of God. In the Old Testament, they knew who was the family of God. Especially when they walked in obedience. But when Abraham did what he did, look what happened. And then it transferred to who? Isaac. 
It's very quiet. And then it transferred to Jacob. So I want you to shout it out. The generational blessing is upon my life for acquisition. Come on, say this with me. This year, I will have less liabilities and more assets. Come on, everybody. Say it again. This year, I will have less liabilities and more assets. But we're going to have to work this spiritually. You can't be crying to God if you're not a tither. Ooh, went quiet. You can't, be, you can't be crying now if, you, if you're withholding. If you withhold your taxes from the government of the earth, what happens? They forgive them all the time. Every time they forgive them. That's right. They come to your house and say, I pardon you. You owed us a lot of money, but praise the Lord. We just are in the spirit of forgiveness. No. So, but yet, we understand that from the earth. But yet, that's why when Scripture says, you know, if you can't do what you see with whom you see, then how can you do it with what you don't see? You understand? Lock the doors. Keep everybody in. No, I just don't think it should be preached about. It should be left up to every individual. I, I agree. I couldn't agree more, actually. Just left up to every individual. But you know what I've learned in life? That once or twice in my life, after 54 years, I've had to have a few people tell me a few things and remind me of a few things. Remind me because they were things I used to do when I had a conviction to do them. But life's moved on, and I don't really have that conviction anymore, so I don't really do that anymore until God sends somebody into my life that reminds me of what I used to do. And that conviction starts to stir again. I wish I could just be my own boss. That's what the world says. I just want to be my own boss. I don't want nobody telling me what to do. But if you can't do what another man requires of you, entrusted to his, then when you have your own, you will not be successful. It is a law. If I could just have my own, no. Because if you can't, make it happen with another person. It will never happen for you on your own. 